Joshua chapter 1 verse 7 Only be strong and very courageous to guard to do all the Torah which Moshe my servant commanded you do not turn from it right or left so that you act wisely wherever you go do not let this book of Torah depart from your mouth but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you guard to do according to all that is written in it for then you shall make your way prosperous and act wisely. Thou shalt have no other deities before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for Yahuwah thy Allah am a jealous Allah, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and the fourth generation of them that hate me, but showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of Yahuwah thy Allah in vain. For Yahuwah will not hold them guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahuwah thy Allah. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor the stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days Yahuwah made the heaven and the earth, the sea and all that is within them, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore Yahuwah blessed the Sabbath day, and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days be long upon the land which Yahuwah thy Allah giveth thee. Thou shalt not murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Numbers chapter 5 Speak unto the children of Yasserah When a man or a woman shall commit any sin that men commit to do a trespass against Yahuwah and that person be guilty then they shall confess their sin which they have done and he shall recompense his trespass with the principle thereof and add unto it the fifth part thereof and give it unto him against whom he hath trespassed. But if the man have no kinsman to recompense the trespass unto, let the trespass be recompensed unto Yahuwah. 
even to the priest, beside the ram of the atonement, whereby an atonement shall be made for him. Even though we don't have a priest today, this law can still be kept. If we sin against a person, we should still do something good for that person to recompense for the sin that we have committed against that person. And if we committed a sin against Yah, then we should simply just confess to Yah and repent and turn away from evil ways. An immediate, public, voluntary confession to the priest was the easiest way not to get put to death for a great sin. Leviticus 19 Yahuwah said to Moses, Speak to the entire assembly of Yasra'al and say to them, be holy, because I, Yahuwah, am holy. Each of you must respect your mother and your father. And you must observe my Sabbaths. I am Yahuwah, your Allah. Do not turn to idols or make metal gods for yourselves. I am Yahuwah, your Allah. When you reap the harvest of your land, do not reap to the very edges of your field or gather the gleams of your harvest. Do not go over your vineyard a second time to pick up the grapes that have fallen. Leave them for the poor and the foreigner. I am Yahuwah your Allah. Do not steal. Do not lie. Do not deceive one another. Do not swear falsely by my name. And so, Profane the name of Yahuwah your Allah. I am Yahuwah. Do not defraud or rob your neighbor. Do not hold back the wages of a hired worker overnight. Do not curse the deaf or put a stumbling block in front of the blind. But fear your all. I am Yahuwah. Do not pervert justice. Do not show partiality to the poor or favoritism to the great, but judge your neighbor fairly. Do not go about spreading slander among your people. Do not do anything that endangers your neighbor's life. I am Yahuwah. Do not hate a fellow Israelite in your heart. Rebuke your neighbor frankly, so you will not share in their guilt. Do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against anyone among your people, but love your neighbor as yourself. I am Yahuwah. Keep my decrees. Do not make different kinds of animals. Do not mingle different kinds of seeds. Do not wear clothing woven with linen and wool. Do not eat any meat with the blood still in it. Do not practice divination or seek omens. Do not cut the hair on the sides of your beard. And do not cut your bodies for the dead or put tattoo marks on yourselves. I am Yahuwah. Do not degrade your daughter by making her a prostitute or the land will fall to prostitution and be filled with wickedness. Observe my Sabbaths and have reverence for my sanctuary. I am Yahuwah. Do not turn to mediums or seek out spiritists, for you will be defiled by them. I am Yahuwah, your Allah. Stand up in the presence of the aged. Show respect for the elderly and revere your Allah. I am Yahuwah. When a foreigner resides among you in your land, do not mistreat them. The foreigner residing among you must be treated as your native born. Love them as yourself, for you were foreigners in Mizraim. I am Yahuwah, your Allah. Do not use dishonored standards when measuring length, weight, or quantity. Use honest scales and honest weights and honest ephah 
and on his hand. I am Yahuwah, your Allah, who brought you out of Mizraim. Keep all of my decrees and all of my laws and follow them. I am Yahuwah. You must not do as they do in Mizraim, where you used to live. And you must not do as they do in the land of Canaan, where I am bringing you. Do not follow their practices. You must obey my laws and be careful to follow my decrees. I am Yahuwah your Allah. Keep my decrees and laws, for the person who obeys them will live by them. I am Yahuwah. No one is to approach any close relative to have sexual relations. I am Yahuwah. Do not dishonor your father by having sexual relations with your mother. She is your mother. Do not have relations with her. Do not have sexual relations with your father's wife. That would dishonor your father. Do not have sexual relations with your sister, either your father's daughter or your mother's daughter whether she was born in the same home or elsewhere. Do not have sexual relations with your son's daughter or your daughter's daughter that will dishonor you. Do not have sexual relations with the daughter of your father's wife, born to your father. She is your sister. Do not have sexual relations with your father's daughter. She is your father's close relative. Do not have sexual relations with your mother's sister, because she is your mother's close relative. Do not dishonor your father's brother by approaching his wife to have sexual relations. She is your aunt. Do not have sexual relations with your daughter-in-law. She is your son's wife. Do not have relations with her. Do not have sexual relations with your brother's wife. That would dishonor your brother. Do not have sexual relations with both a woman and her daughter. 
do not have sexual relations with either her son's daughter or her daughter's daughter. They are her close relatives. That is wickedness. Do not take your wife's sister as a rival wife and have sexual relations with her while your wife is living. Do not approach a woman to have sexual relations during the uncleanliness of her monthly period. Do not have sexual relations with your neighbor's wife and defile yourself with her. Do not give any of your children to be sacrificed to Molech, for you must not profane the name of your Allah. I am Yahuwah. Do not have sexual relations with a man as one does with a woman. That is detestable. Do not have sexual relations with an animal and defile yourself with it. A woman must not present herself to an animal to have sexual relations with it. That is perversion. Do not defile yourselves in any of these ways because this is how the nations that I am going to drive out before you became defiled. Even the land was defiled. So I punished it for its sin and the land vomited out its inhabitants. But you must keep my decrees and my laws. The native born and the foreigners residing among you must not do any of these detestable things. For all these things were done by the people who lived in the land before you, and the land became defiled. And if you defile the land, it will vomit you out, as it vomited out the nations that were before you. Everyone who does any of these detestable things, such persons must be cut off from their people. Deuteronomy 22 If you see your fellow Israelite's ox or sheep straying, do not ignore it, but be sure to take it back to its owner. If they do not live near to you, or if you do not know who owns it, Take it home with you and keep it until they come looking for it, then give it back. Do the same if you find a donkey or cloak or anything else that they have lost. Do not ignore it. If you see your fellow Israelites donkey or ox falling on the road, do not ignore it. Help the owner get it to his feet. A woman must not wear men's clothing, nor shall a man wear woman's clothing. For Yahuwah, your Allah, detests anyone who does this. If you come across a bird's nest besides the road, either in a tree or on the ground, and the mother is sitting on the young or on the eggs, do not take the mother with the young. You may take the young, but be sure to let the mother go so that it may go well with you, and you may have a long life. When you build a new house, make a battlement around your roof so that you may not bring the guilt of bloodshed upon your house if someone falls from the roof. Do not mingle two different types of seeds together to produce a hybrid. If you do, not only the crops you plant, but also the fruit of your vineyard will be defiled. Do not plow with an ox and a donkey yoked together. Do not wear clothes of wool and linen woven together.
Make fringes on the four sides of the cloak that you wear. If a man happens to meet in a town, a virgin pledged to be married, and he sleeps with her, you shall take both of them to the gate of the town and stone them to death. The young woman, because she was in the town and did not scream for help, and the man, because he violated another man's wife, you must purge the evil from among you. If out in the country a man happens to meet a young woman, pledged to be married, and rapes her, only the man who does this thing shall die. Do nothing to the woman. She has not committed no sin deserving of death. This case is like that of someone who attacks and murders a neighbor. For the man found a young woman out in the country, and though the betrothed woman screamed, there was none to rescue her. If a man happens to meet a virgin who is not pledged to be married and seduces her and she agrees to lie with him and they are discovered, he shall pay her father 50 shekels of silver. He must marry the young woman for he has violated her. He can never divorce her as long as he lives. Deuteronomy 24. If a man marries a woman who becomes displeasing to him because he finds something indecent about her, and he writes her a certificate of divorce, gives it to her and sends her from his house. And if after she leaves his house and becomes the wife of another man, and her second husband dislikes her and writes her a certificate of divorce, gives it to her and sends her from his house, or if he dies, then her first husband who divorced her is not allowed to marry her again after she has been defiled. That will be detestable in the eyes of Yahuwah. Do not bring sin upon the land. Yahuwah, your Allah, is giving you as an inheritance. If a man has recently married, he must not be sent to war or have any duty laid on him. For one year, he is to be free and stay at home and bring happiness to his wife he has married. If someone is caught kidnapping a fellow Israelite, treating or selling them as a slave, that kidnapper must die. You must purge the evil from among you. When you make a loan of any kind to your neighbor, do not go into their house to get what is offered to you as a pledge. Stay outside and let the neighbor to whom you are making the loan bring the pledge out to you. If the neighbor is poor, do not go to sleep with their pledge in your possession. Return their cloak by the sunset so that your neighbor may sleep in it. Then they will thank you and it will be regarded as a righteous act in the sight of Yahuwah your Allah. Do not take advantage of a hired worker who is poor or needy, whether that worker is a fellow Israelite or a foreigner residing in one of your towns. Pay them their wages each day before the sunset, because they are poor and are counting on it. Otherwise, they may cry to Yahuwah against you, and you will be guilty of sin. Parents are not to be put to death for their children, nor children put to death for their parents. Everyone must die for their own sin. Do not deprive the foreigner or the fatherless of justice, or take the cloak of the widow as a pledge. Remember that you were slaves in Mizraim, and Yahuwah your Allah redeemed you from there. That is why I commanded you to do this. When you are harvesting in your field, and you overlook a chef, do not go back to get it. Leave it for the foreigner, the fatherless, and the widow, so that Yahuwah your Allah may bless you in all the work of your hands. When you beat the olives from the tree, 
Do not go over the branches a second time. Leave that which remains for the foreigner and the fatherless and the widow. When you harvest the grapes in your vineyard, do not go over the vines again. Leave what remains for the foreigner, the fatherless and the widow. Remember that you were slaves in Mizraim. That is why I command you to do this. Exodus 21 verse 15 Anyone who attacks their father or their mother is to be put to death. And anyone who kidnaps someone is to be put to death whether the victim has been sold or is still in the kidnapper's possession. Anyone who wishes evil upon their father or their mother is to be put to death. If a bull or any other domesticated animal gores a man to death, then the bull is to be stoned to death, and his meat shall not be eaten. But the owner of that bull will not be held responsible. If, however, the bull has had the habit of violence, and the owner has been warned but has not kept it pinned up, and it kills a man or a woman, the bull is to be stoned and its owner also is to be put to death. However, if the payment is demanded, the owner may redeem his life by payment of whatever is demanded. This law also applies if the bull gores a son or a daughter. If anyone uncovers a pit or digs one and fails to cover it, and an ox or donkey falls into it, the one who opened the pit must pay the owner for the loss and take the dead animal in exchange. If anyone's bull injures anyone else's bull and it dies, the two parties shall sell the live one and divide both the money and the dead animal equally. However, if it was known that the bull had a habit of violence, yet the owner did not keep it pinned up, the owner must pay animal for animal and take the dead animal in exchange. Exodus 22 Whoever steals an ox or a sheep and slaughters it or sells it must pay back five oxen for one ox and four sheep for the one sheep. If a thief is caught breaking in at night and is struck by a fatal blow, the defender is not guilty of bloodshed. But if it happens after sunrise, the defender is guilty of bloodshed. If the animal stolen is found alive in their possession, whether ox or donkey or sheep, they must pay back double. If anyone grazes their livestock in a field or vineyard and lets them stray and graze in someone else's field, the offender must pay restitution from the best of their own field or their vineyard. If a fire breaks out and spreads into the thorn bushes so that it burns shocks of grain or standing grain in the whole field, then the one who started the fire must make restitution. If anyone gives a neighbor silver or goods for safekeeping and they are stolen from the neighbor's house, the thief, if caught, must pay back double. If anybody borrows an animal from their neighbor 
and he gets injured or dies while the owner is not present, they must make restitution. But if the owner is with the animal, the borrower will not have to pay. If the animal was hired, the money paid for the hire covers the loss. Exodus 23 Do not spread false reports. Do not help a guilty person by being a malicious witness. Do not follow the crowd in doing wrong. When you give a testimony in a lawsuit, do not pervert justice by siding with the crowd and do not show favoritism to a poor person in a lawsuit. If you see the donkey of someone who hates you falling down under its load, do not leave it there. Be sure to help them with it. This law is telling you that even someone who you consider your enemy or someone who does not like you or someone who hates you, even those people shall you surely help. Do not deny justice to your poor people in their lawsuits. Have nothing to do with a false charge and do not put an innocent person or honest person to death for I will not acquit the guilty. Do not accept a bribe, for a bribe blinds those who see and twist the words of the innocent. Do not oppress a foreigner. You yourselves know how it feels to be foreigners, because you were foreigners in Mizraim. Six days do your work, but on a seventh day do not work, so that your ox and your donkey may rest and that your servant born in your household and the foreigner living among you may be refreshed. Be careful to do everything that I said to you. Do not say the names of other deities. Do not let them be heard out of your lips. Exodus 31 verse 13 Say to the Israelites, You must observe my Sabbaths. This will be a sign between me and you for the generations to come, so you may know that I am Yah, who makes you holy. Observe the Sabbath, because it is holy to you. Anyone who desecrates it is to be put to death. Those who do any work on that day must be cut off from their people. For six days work is to be done, but the seventh day is a day of rest. Holy to Yahuwah. Whoever does any work on the Sabbath day is to be put to death. The Israelites are to observe the Sabbath, celebrating it for the generations to come forever as an everlasting covenant. It will be a sign between me and the Israelites forever. For in six days Yahuwah made the heavens and the earth and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. Leviticus chapter 5 If anyone becomes aware that they are guilty, if they unwittingly touch anything ceremonially unclean, whether the carcass of an unclean animal, wild or domestic, or of any unclean creature that moves along the ground, and they are unaware that they have become unclean, but they have come to realize their guilt, or if they touch any human uncleanness, anything that will make them unclean, even though they are unaware of it, but then learn of it and realize their guilt, or if anyone thoughtlessly takes an oath to do anything, whether good or evil, in any matter, one might carelessly swear about even though they are unaware of it but then they learn of it and realize their guilt and anyone becomes aware that they are guilty in any of these matters they must confess what they have sinned leviticus chapter 7 yahuwah said unto moshe say to the israelites do not eat any of the fat of cattle sheep or goats the fat of an animal found dead or torn by wild animals 
may be used for other purposes, but you shall not eat it. And wherever you live, you must not eat blood of any bird or animal. Leviticus 11 Say to the Israelites, Of all the animals that live on land, these are the ones you may eat. You may eat any animal that has a divided hoof and chews the cud. There are some that only chew the cud or only have a divided hoof, but you must not eat them. The camel, for example, though it chews the cud, does not have a divided hoof. It is unclean to you. The coney, though it chews the cud, does not have a divided hoof. It is unclean to you. The rabbit, though it chews the cud, it does not have a divided hoof. It is unclean to you. And the pig, though it has a divided hoof, it does not chew the cud. It is unclean to you. You must not eat their meat or touch their carcasses they are unclean to you of all creatures living in the water or of the seas and the streams. You may eat any of them that have fins and scales, but all creatures in the seas and the streams that do not have fins and scales, whether among all swarming things or among all other living creatures in the water, you are to regard as unclean. And since you are to regard them as unclean, you must not eat their meat. You must regard their carcasses as abominations unto you. Anything that is living in the water that does not have fins and scales is to be regarded as an abomination unto you. These are the birds you are to regard as unclean and not eat because they are unclean. Any kind of eagle, any kind of vulture, any kind of kite, any kind of raven, any kind of owl, any kind of gold, any kind of hawk, any kind of cormorant, any kind of osprey, any kind of stork, any kind of swan, any kind of pelican, any kind of heron, any kind of lapwing, any kind of bat, all flying insects that walk on all their legs are to be regarded as unclean. There are some, however, some flying insects that walk on all their legs that you may eat. Those that have jointed legs for hopping on the ground, of them you may eat any kind of locust, any kind of cricket, any kind of grasshopper, and any kind of katydid. But all other kinds of flying insects that walk on all their legs you are to regard them as unclean. You will make yourselves unclean by these. Whoever touches their carcass will be unclean till evening. Whoever picks up one of their carcasses must wash their clothes and will be unclean till evening. Every animal that does not have a divided hoof or does not chew the cud is unclean for you. Whoever touches the carcass of any of them will be unclean. Of all animals that walk on all fours, those that walk on their paws are unclean for you. Whoever touches their carcass will be unclean till evening. Anyone who picks up their carcass must wash their clothes, and they will be unclean till evening. These animals are unclean for you. Of the animals that move along the ground, these are unclean for you. The weasel, the rat, any kind of great lizard, the gecko, the dragon, the wall lizard, the skink, and the alligator. All of these that move along the ground, these are unclean for you. Whoever touches them when they are dead will be unclean till evening. And when one of them dies and falls on something, that article, whatever its use, will be unclean. Whether it be made of wood, cloth, hide, or sackcloth, put it in water and it will be unclean until evening, and then it will be clean. If one of them falls into a clay pot, everything in it will be unclean, and you must break the pot. Any food you are allowed to eat that has come into contact with water from such pot is unclean. Any liquid that is drunk from such pot is unclean. Anything that one of their carcasses falls on becomes unclean. 
A spring, however, or a cistern for collecting water remains clean. But anyone who touches one of these carcasses is unclean. If a carcass falls on any seeds that are to be planted, they remain clean. But if water has been put on the seed and a carcass falls on it, then it is unclean to you. If an animal that you are allowed to eat dies, anyone who touches his carcass will be unclean till evening. Anyone who eats of that carcass must wash their clothes and they will be unclean until evening. Anyone who picks up their carcass must wash their clothes and be unclean until evening. Every creature that moves along the ground is to be regarded as unclean. It is not to be eaten. You are not to eat any creature that moves along the ground, whether it moves on its belly or walks on all fours or has many feet. It is unclean. Do not defile yourselves by any of these creatures do not make yourselves unclean or be made unclean by them. I am Yahuwah, your Allah. Consecrate yourselves and be holy because I am holy. Do not make yourselves unclean by any creature that moves along the ground. I am Yahuwah who brought you up out of Mizraim to be your Allah. Therefore, be holy because I am holy. These are the regulations concerning animals, birds, and every living thing that moves in the water, and every creature that moves along the ground. You must distinguish between unclean and clean, between living creatures that may be eaten and those that may not be eaten. Leviticus 12 And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Yasserah, saying, When a woman has conceived, and has given birth to a male child, she shall be unclean seven days, as in the days of her monthly separation she is unclean. And on the eighth day, the flesh of his foreskin is circumcised, and she remains in the blood of her cleansing thirty-three days. She should not touch any holy thing, and she should not go into the tabernacle until her days of her cleansing are completed. But if she gives birth to a female child, then she shall be unclean for two weeks, as in the days of her monthly separation. And she shall remain in the blood of her cleansing for sixty-six days. Leviticus 23 And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, These are my appointed festivals, the appointed festivals of Yahuwah, which you are to proclaim as sacred assemblies. There are six days when you may work. But the seven days a day of Shabbat rest, a day of a sacred assembly. You are not to do any work wherever you live. It is a Shabbat to Yahuwah. These are Yahuwah's appointed festivals, the sacred assemblies, which you are to proclaim at their appointed times. Yahuwah's Passover begins at evening on the 14th day of the first month. On the 15th day of that month, Yahuwah's festival of unleavened bread begins. For seven days you must eat unleavened bread. On the first day you are to hold a sacred assembly and do no servile work. Yahuwah said unto Moshe, Say unto the Israelites, On the first day of the seventh month you are to have a day of Shabbat rest, a sacred assembly commemorated with the blowing of trumpets. Yahuwah said unto Moshe, the tenth day of the seventh month is the Day of Atonement. Hold a sacred assembly and fast. Do not do any work on that day, because it is the Day of Atonement, when atonement is made for you before Yahuwah, your Allah. Those who do not fast on that day must be cut off from their people. I will destroy from among their people anyone who does any work on that day. You shall do no work at all. This is to be a lasting ordinance for the generations to come. Wherever you live it is a day of Shabbat rest for you. And you must fast from the evening of the ninth day of the month until the following evening you are to observe your Shabbat. Yahuwah said unto Moshe, Say unto the Israelites, On the fifteenth day of the seventh month is Yahuwah's festival of tabernacles. And it lasts for seven days. The first day is a sacred assembly. Do no servile work. 
So beginning with the 15th day of the seventh month, after you have gathered the crops of your land, celebrate a festival to Yahuwah for seven days. For the first day is a day of Shabbat rest, and the eighth day is also a day of Shabbat rest. On the first day, you are to take branches from luxuriant trees, from palms, willows, and other leafy trees, and rejoice before Yahuwah, your Allah, for seven days. Celebrate this festival to Yahuwah for seven days each year. This is to be a lasting ordinance for the generations to come. Celebrate it in the seventh month. Live in tents for seven days. All native-born Israelites are to live in such shelters, so your descendants will know that I had the Israelites live in tents when I brought them out of Mizraim. I am Yahuwah, your Allah. Leviticus 15 And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe and Aharon, saying, Speak unto the children of Yasserol, and say unto them, When any man has discharged from his flesh, his discharge is unclean. And this is the uncleanness in regard to his discharge, whether his flesh runs with his discharge, or his flesh is stopped up by his discharge. It is his uncleanness. Any bed becomes unclean, on which he who has the discharge lies and any object on which he sits becomes unclean. And anyone who touches his bed has to wash his garments and shall bathe in water and be unclean until evening. And anyone who sits upon any object on which he who has the discharge set has to wash his garments and shall bathe in water and be unclean until evening. And he who touches the flesh of him who has the discharge has to wash his garments and shall bathe in water, and shall be unclean until evening. And when he who has the discharge spits upon him who is clean, then shall he wash his garments, and bathe in water, and be unclean until evening. Any saddle on which he has the discharge rise upon becomes unclean. And whoever touches anything that was under him is unclean until evening. And he who is carrying them up has to wash his garments, and shall bathe in water, and shall be unclean until evening. And anyone whom he who has the discharge touches without rinsing his hands in water shall wash his garments, and bathe in water, and be unclean until evening. And the earthen vessel which he who has the discharge touches has to be broken and every wooden vessel has to be rinsed in water. And when he who has a discharge is cleansed of his discharge, he shall count for himself seven days for his cleansing, and shall wash his garments, and bathe all his flesh in running water, and be clean. And when a man releases semen, he must wash all his flesh in water, and be unclean until evening. Any garment and any leather on which there is semen shall also be washed with water and be unclean until evening. And when a woman lies with a man and there is a release of semen, they both shall bathe in water and be unclean until evening. And when a woman has a discharge and the discharge of her flesh is blood, she has to be in her separation for seven days and whoever touches her is unclean until the evening. And whatever she lies on during her separation is unclean, and whatever she sits on is unclean. And anyone who touches her bed has to wash his garments, and shall bathe in water, and be unclean until the evening. And whoever touches any object that she sat on has to wash his garments, and be unclean until evening. And if it is on the bed or any object on which she sits, when he touches it, he is unclean until evening. And if a man lays down in the bed with her at all, and her monthly flow is on him, he shall be unclean seven days. And any bed he lies on is unclean. And when a woman has a discharge of blood for many days, 
other than the time of her monthly separation or when she discharges beyond her usual time of monthly separation. All the days of her unclean discharge shall be as the days of her monthly separation. She is unclean. Any bed on which she lies all the days of her discharge is to her as the bed of her monthly separation. And whatever she sits on is unclean as the uncleanliness of her monthly separation. And anyone who touches them is unclean and shall wash his garments and shall bathe in water and shall be unclean into evening. And if she is cleansed of her discharge, then she shall count for herself seven days. And after that, she is clean. Thus shall you separate the children of Yasra all from their uncleanliness, lest they die in their uncleanliness when they walk into my tabernacle, which is in their midst. This is a Torah for one who has a discharge and for him who emits semen and is unclean thereby, and for her who is sick on her monthly separation, and for one who has a discharge, either man or woman, and for him who lays down with an unclean woman. Leviticus 24, verse 15. Say to the Israelites, anyone who curses their Allah will be held responsible. Anyone who blasphemes the name of Yahuwah shall be put to death. The entire assembly must stone them, whether foreigner or native born. When they blaspheme the name, they are to be put to death. Anyone who murders another human being is to be put to death. Anyone who takes the life of someone else's animal must make restitution, animal for animal. Anyone who injures their neighbor is to be injured in the same manner, fracture for fracture, eye for eye, tooth for tooth. The one who has inflicted the injury must suffer the same injury. Whoever kills an animal must make restitution, but whoever murders a human being is to be put to death. You are to have the same law for the foreigner and the native born. I am Yahuwah, your Allah. The Book of Numbers, Chapter 6 Yahuwah said unto Moshe, Speak unto the Israelites and say to them, If a man or a woman wants to make a special vow, a vow of dedication to Yahuwah, to make themselves separate and holy unto Yahuwah your Allah, they must make the vow of a Nazarite. They must abstain from wine and other fermented drinks, and must not drink vinegar made from wine or other fermented drink. They must not drink grape juice or eat grapes or raisins as long as they remain under the Nazarite vow. They must not eat anything that comes from the grapevine, not even the seeds or the skins. During the entire period of their Nazarite vow, no razor may be used on their head. They must be holy until the period of their dedication to Yahuwah is over. They must let the locks of their hair grow long. Throughout the period of their dedication to Yahuwah, the Nazarite must not go near a dead body. Even if their own father or their own mother or brother or sister dies, they must not make themselves ceremonially unclean on the account of them because the consecration of all is on their head. Throughout the period of their dedication, they are consecrated to Yahuwah. If someone dies suddenly in a Nazarite's presence, thus defiling the hair that symbolizes their dedication, they must shave their head on the seventh day of their cleansing. Now this is the Torah of the Nazarite when the period of their dedication is over. The Nazarite must shave off the hair that symbolizes their dedication. They are to take the hair and put it in the fire. Book of Numbers Chapter 15, verse 38. Speak unto the children of Yasra all, and bid them that they make them fringes on the borders of their garments throughout their generations, and that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. And it shall be unto you a fringe, 
that you may look upon it and remember all the commandments of Yahuwah and do them, that you do not seek after your own heart and after your own eyes, after which you use to go a horn. Numbers chapter 19, verse 14. This is the Torah that applies when a man dies in a tent. Anyone who enters the tent and anyone who is in the tent will be unclean for seven days. And every open container without a lid fastened on it will be unclean. Anyone who is out in the open who touches someone who has been killed with a sword or someone who has died a natural death or someone who touches a human bone or a grave shall be unclean for seven days. Numbers chapter 27 verse 8 Say to the Israelites, If a man dies and leaves no son, give his inheritance to his daughter. If he has no daughter, give his inheritance to his brothers. If he has no brothers, give his inheritance to his father's brothers. If his father had no brothers, give his inheritance to his nearest relative in his tribe, that he may possess it. This is the Torah of inheritance for the Israelites, as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 4. Hear, O Yasserah, Yahuwah, or Allah, Yahuwah is one. Love Yahuwah, your Allah, with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Teach them to your children. Talk of them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. They shall be as if it were a sign on your hand or as if it were jewelry dangling between your eyes. For you shall remember them at all times. Write them upon the door frames of your house and upon your gates. When Yahuwah, your Allah, brings you into the land which he swore unto your fathers, to Abraham, Yasak, and Yaakov, to give you a land with large, flourishing cities which you did not build, houses full of all kinds of good things which you did not provide, wells which you did not dig, and vineyards and olive groves which you did not plant, then you should eat. Then when you eat and be satisfied, be careful that you do not forget Yahuwah. Who brought you out of Mizraim, out of the land of slavery. Deuteronomy 28 If you fully obey Yahuwah your Allah and carefully follow all of his commands which I give you today, Yahuwah your Allah will set you on high above all the nations of the earth. All these blessings will come on you and overwhelm you if you obey Yahuwah your Allah. You will be blessed in the city and blessed in the country. The fruit of your womb will be blessed, the crops of your land and the young of your livestock, the calves of your herds, the lambs of your flocks. Your marketplaces will be blessed. You will be blessed when you come in and you will be blessed when you go out. Yahuwah will grant that the enemies who rise up against you will be defeated before you. They will come at you from one direction but flee from you in seven directions. Yahuwah will send a blessing on your barns and on everything that you put your hand to do. Yahuwah your Allah will bless you in the land he is giving you. Yahuwah will establish you as his holy people as he promised you an oath. If you keep the commands of Yahuwah your Allah and walk in obedience to him, then all the people of the earth will see that you are called by the name of Yahuwah and they will fear you. Yahuwah will grant you abundant prosperity in the fruit of your womb, the young of your livestock, and the crops of your ground, in the land he swore to your ancestor to give you. Yahuwah will open the heavens, the storehouse of his bounty, to send rain on your land in the season, and bless all the works of your hands. You will lend to many nations, but will borrow from none. Yahuwah will make you the head and not the tail. If you pay attention to the commands of Yahuwah your Allah that I give you this day and carefully follow them, you will always be at the top and never at the bottom. Do not turn aside from any of the commands I give you today to the right or to the left 
following other gods and serving them. However, if you do not obey Yahuwah your Allah and do not carefully follow his commands and his decrees that I am giving you today, all these curses will come upon you and overtake you. You will be cursed in the city and cursed in the country. Your basket and your store will be cursed. The fruit of your womb will be cursed and the crops of your land, the calves of your herds, the lambs of your flocks, and you will be cursed when you come in and you will be cursed when you go out. Yahuwah will send upon you curses, confusion, and rebuke, and everything that you put your hands to until you are destroyed and come to a sudden ruin because of the evil that you have done in forsaking him. Yahuwah will plague you with diseases until he has destroyed you from the land you are entering to possess. Yahuwah will strike you with a wasting disease, fever and inflammation, with scorching heat and drought, with blight and mildew, which will plague you until you perish. The sky over your head will be bronze, and earth beneath you iron. Yahuwah will turn the rain of your land and your country into powder and dust. It will rain down from the skies until you are destroyed. Yahuwah will cause you to be defeated before your enemies. You will come at them from one direction, but flee from them in seven directions. And you will become a thing of horror to all the kingdoms of the earth. Your carcasses will be food. For all the birds and wild animals, and there will be none to frighten them away. Yahuwah will afflict you with boils of Mizraim and with tumors, festering sores, and the itch from which you cannot be cured. Yahuwah will afflict you with madness, blindness, and confusion of mind. At midday, you will grope about like a blind person in the dark. You will be unsuccessful in everything you do. Day after day, you will be oppressed and robbed. With no one to rescue you. You will marry a woman, but another man will take her and rape her. You will build a house, but you will not live in it. You will plant a vineyard, but you will not even begin to enjoy its fruit. Your ox will be slaughtered before your eyes, but you will eat none of it. Your donkey will be forcefully taken from your eyes and will not be returned. Your sheep will be given to your enemies and no one will rescue them. Your sons and your daughters will be given into another nation and you will wear out your eyes, watching them day after day, powerless to lift a hand. A people which you do not know will eat what your land and labor produce and you will have nothing but cruel oppression all your days. The sights of which you will see will drive you mad. Yahuwah will afflict your knees and legs with painful boils that cannot be cured, spreading from the soles of your feet to the top of your head. Yahuwah will drive you and your king, which you set over you to a nation unknown, to you or your ancestors. And there you shall worship other gods, gods of wood and gods of stone. You will become a thing of horror, a byword, and an object of ridicule among all the peoples where Yahuwah will drive you. And you will sow much seed in the field, but you will harvest little, because the locust will devour it. You will plant vineyards and cultivate them, but you will not drink the wine or gather the grapes, because the worms will eat them. You will have olive trees throughout your country, but you will not use the oil, because the olives will drop off. You will have sons and daughters, but you will not keep them, because they will go into captivity. Swarms of locusts will take over your trees and the crops of your land. The foreigners who reside among you will raise up above you higher and higher, but you will just continuously sink lower and lower. They will lend unto you, but you will not lend unto them. They will be the head, and you will be the tail. All these curses will come upon you. They will pursue you and overwhelm you until you are destroyed. Because you did not obey Yahuwah your Allah and serve him and observe his commandments and his decrees which he gave you. They will be a sign and a wonder to you and your descendants forever. Because you did not serve Yahuwah your Allah joyfully and gladly in the time of prosperity. Therefore, in hunger and thirst and in nakedness and in dire poverty, you will serve the enemies Yahuwah sends against you. He will put an iron yoke on your neck until he has destroyed you. Yahuwah will bring a nation against you from far away, from the ends of the earth, like an eagle swooping down, a nation whose language you would not understand, a fierce-looking nation without respect for the old or the pity for the young. They will devour the young of your livestock 
and the crops of your land until you are destroyed. They will leave you no grain, new wine or oil, nor any calves of your herds or lambs or of your flocks until you are ruined. They will lay sage in all your cities and all your land until the high fortified walls in which you trust shall fall down. They will besage all your cities throughout the land. Yahuwah your Allah is giving you. Because of the suffering your enemies will inflict upon you during the sage, you will eat the fruit of your womb, the flesh of your sons and daughters. Yahuwah your Allah has given you. Even the most gentle and sensitive men among you will have no compassion on his own brother or on the wife he loves or his children which he shall leave. And he will not give to one of them any of the flesh of his children that he is eating. It will be all that is left because of the suffering your enemies will inflict on you during the sage of your cities. The most gentle and sensitive woman among you, so sensitive and gentle that she would not even venture to touch the ground with the sole of her foot. She will begrudge the husband she loves and her own son or daughter, the afterbirth from her womb and the children she bears. For in dire need, she intends to eat them secretly because of the suffering your enemies will inflict on you during the sage of your cities. If you do not carefully follow all the words of this Torah, which are written in this book, and obey Yahuwah your Allah, and adhere to the covenant you have made with him, and do not revere his glorious and awesome name, Yahuwah your Allah, Yahuwah will send fearful plagues on you and your descendants, harsh and prolonged disasters and severe lingering illnesses. He will bring on you all the diseases of Mizraim that you dreaded, and they will cling to you. Yahuwah will also bring on you every kind of sickness and every kind of disaster not recorded in this Torah. Until you are destroyed, you are as numerous as the stars in the sky, but will be left few in number among the enemies will I will bring you, because you did not obey Yahuwah your Allah, just as it pleased Yahuwah to make you prosper and increase in number, so will it please him to ruin and destroy you. You will be uprooted from the land which you are entering to possess. Yahuwah will scatter you among all nations from one end of the earth unto the other. There you will worship other deities, gods of wood and stone, which neither you nor your ancestors have even known. Among these nations you will find no rest. There Yahuwah will give you an anxious mind, eyes weary with longing, and a despairing heart. You will live in constant suspense, filled with dread, both day and night, never sure of your life. In the morning you will say, if only it were evening. And in the evening you will say, if only it were morning, because of the terror that will fill your hearts and the sights your eyes will see. Yahuwah will send you back to Mizraim with ships. On a journey, I said, you will never see again. There you will be sold to your enemies as bondmen and bondwomen, but no man will save you. But, Leviticus 26, verse 3. If you follow my decrees and are careful to obey my commandments, I will send you rain in this season, and the ground will yield its crops and the trees their fruit. Your threshing will continue into grape harvest, and your grape harvest will continue into planting, and you will eat the food you want and live in safety in your land. I will grant peace in the land and you will lie down and no one will make you afraid. I will remove wild beasts from the land and the sword will not pass through your country. I will pursue your enemies and they will fall by the sword before you. Five of you will chase a hundred and a hundred of you will chase 10,000 and your enemies will fall by the sword before you. I will look on you with favor, make you fruitful, and increase your numbers, and I will keep my covenant with you. You will still be eating last year's harvest when you will have to move it out to make room for the new. 
I will put my dwelling place among you, and I will not hate you. I will walk among you and be your Allah, and you will be my people. I am Yahuwah who brought you out of Mizraim, so that you will no longer be slaves for the mysteries. I broke your bars and your yoke and enabled you to walk with heads held high.